My name is Mary Cassian. Welcome to the Girls Gone Wise video book blog. If you've been following the blog and reading the book, you've probably started to notice that the sage's description of the Girl Gone Wild corresponds to what popular culture upholds as the ideal for women. If the wild thing of Proverbs chapter 7 were alive today, she'd fit right in. In fact, she'd probably make it to the cover of Cosmopolitan, or be a candidate for a Woman of the Year award, or be featured in the who's who of Forbes' most powerful women, or maybe be hired by Hollywood to be the next sexy, aggressive, karate-chopping, gun-slinging, male-kicking female star. In this day and age, the characteristics of the wild thing are upheld as the ideal, and the characteristics of the wise thing are considered old-fashioned, out of touch, out of date. So if you choose to pattern your womanhood according to the Bible, you're going to find yourself swimming upstream. The Bible's instructions are very countercultural, And nowhere is that more evident than in today's point of contrast, which is a girl's attitude, her prevailing disposition. Proverbs chapter 7, the sage pegs the wild thing as loud, and wayward. Loud isn't just talking about volume. It means to murmur, to growl, or to roar. Uh, wayward indicates uh, t that this woman is stubborn or rebellious. It shows that she has a defiant, self-willed, obstinate, nobody tells me what to do frame of mind. Uh, she's a defiant, sassy, brassy, my way or highway kind of a girl. She refuses to be led, especially by a man. No one has a right to tell her what to do. Our culture preaches that a clamorous, defiant attitude for women is a virtue. It often dresses it up nicely, calls it something more respectable like self-confidence, assertiveness, or personal empowerment, but it's really the same thing. The clamorous, defiant attitude of the girl gone wild stands in marked contrast to the soft, receptive disposition that the Lord intended for women. Scripture teaches that the girl gone wise is characterized by a gentle, calm, amenable, womanly disposition, which is incredibly beautiful and very, very precious to God. When Adam first laid his eyes on the woman, he broke into an exuberant, spontaneous poem. This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Those two words, man and woman, uh, the word woman, isha, and the word man, ish, uh, the Hebrew terms are really interesting. They have a complementary meaning. Ish comes from the root meaning strength, while Isha probably comes from the root meaning soft. The woman was created to be the beautiful soft one, the receiver, responder, and relater. Now this beautiful softness of womanhood was severely damaged when Eve sinned, but the New Testament directs us back to reclaim the beauty of our original created design. It talks about the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet womanly spirit. It also talks about amenability or deference, a willingness that uh, a willingness to respond that expresses itself in a married woman's life by her submission to her husband, but also in an unmarried woman's life in her willingness to respond and relate in a womanly fashion. Scripture maintains that gentleness, calmness, and amenability are foundational to godly womanhood. You'll find out more about what that means when you read the fourth point of contrast between a wild and a wise woman. I think you'll see that you don't have to be a girly girl to cultivate a soft, beautiful womanly disposition. Womanliness has to do with a girl's attitude rather than her occupation or her hobbies or her talents. It's more of an internal than an external characteristic. It involves who she is more than it involves what she does. Cultivating a womanly disposition doesn't mean that you have to violate your personality either. You won't have to morph into a timid introvert or become indecisive or unopinionated or less gregarious if that's your personality. If you allow God to transform your attitude, you'll find that you will become more you. Your personality is going to shine even more. 
We become stronger, not weaker, more and not less when we become who God created us to be. So when it comes to attitude, you do have a choice to make. Uh, are you going to accept the deceptive lie that's so prevalent in our culture that a sassy, defiant spirit is desirable or attractive? Or that a soft, amenable, receptive disposition is a mark of weakness? Are you going to hang on to sin's twisted distortion of what it means to be a woman? Or are you going to agree with God about what kind of attitude in women is truly beautiful and precious in His eyes? What kind of an attitude are you going to choose to cultivate in your life? Over the next few days, read the fourth point of contrast between a wild and a wise woman. Answer the chapter questions, interact on the blog. Let me know what you think about cultivating a womanly disposition. Do you bristle at the thought or do you welcome it? Uh, what do you think prevents you from embracing the type of attitude that scripture upholds as beautiful and precious? Know that I am praying for you as you wrestle with these important ideas. I pray that God's going to renew your mind, redeem your womanly spirit, and transform you into a breathtakingly beautiful girl gone wise. Thanks so much for joining me for this video blog. I'll see you next time.